The Arizona Sustainability Alliance is made up of hundreds of passionate volunteers working to create and support cutting-edge, project-based sustainability solutions throughout Arizona. executive director of the Arizona Sustainability Alliance. I'm at the new school for arts and academics in Tempe. This is actually the location of where we did our first tree planting. So you can see behind me this relatively large trees that we planted in April of 2018. We actually planted 19 trees to be able to increase the shade for students for when they're outside. Thanks for listening. We hope to see you at our next tree planting. and Esser, and I'm president of the board of directors for Arizona Sustainability Alliance. I joined ACSA a little over two years ago. It seems like yesterday. I've had so much fun with this group. I just rolled up my sleeves and gotten into board development when COVID hit. But it's true, it's true, ACSA spirit, they did not slow down one bit. We have always worked remotely anyway, all of us. And this gave us the opportunity to really focus on strategy, outreach, and growth. Our organization has seen unprecedented growth. From tree plantings to conservation, education programs in schools, everything this group does is near and dear to my heart. This team has only four employees, but hundreds and hundreds of volunteers of all ages, all walks of life. Yet their enthusiasm for all things community, equity, sustainability is absolutely contagious. Their enthusiasm rocks. I can hardly wait to see what the future holds for this group and for the future of Arizona.
the Urban Forestry Roundtable was started about two years ago by the Arizona Sustainability Alliance, the City of Phoenix, and American Forest. It was started after having multiple conversations with cities, nonprofits, for profits, different levels of the state and counties to really identify the fact that urban forestry and increasing the tree canopy in vulnerable communities is extremely important, but there are a number of underlying issues that need to be addressed. We currently have about 100 different people that participate. It's about 45 different organizations. The most successful projects have you know groups or organizations that are working together towards a common goal. The HOA project where we need the support of the roundtable, trying to help write our lessons that we would teach to the HOAs. They are providing most of the knowledge base and I'm trying to help out with the education. They don't have the technical expertise. They don't have the resources available to them to properly manage what they are responsible for what can be brought in to help better manage the green assets that they have and that make up a part of the overall matrix in the urban area. I think putting together some sort of citizen forestry program that we can all work together to build is really important. A lot of folks are interested in having groups of volunteers that are trained to do things related to urban forestry using best practice. The roundtable can play a critical role in that if we are working together to combine our resources. When we think about urban forestry, we have to think of it from a totally different perspective. We are actually installing the urban forest. The idea of cool corridors, being able to create this idea of increased walkability, being able to utilize bike paths where there's shade, sidewalks where there's shade, and ability to walk to public transportation is extremely important. Replicating the urban forestry roundtable, I think is a great idea. The roundtable is a great example of a group of people that are interested in urban forestry coming together around projects to make them happen for the community rather than just in service to any one individual organization. Really everyone working on a, a single goal to try to make the availability of green spaces to everyone, not just those that can afford it. I think we also have a good opportunity for outreach into these communities in the, the urbanized area and those that are responsible for not only maintaining them now, but developing those environments. The best way to get folks on the same page in any community is to have an organization around ideas that people can collaborate on. I think this is just an amazing demonstration of not only being able to understand and respect different people's opinions, voices, expertise, but then take that and translate you know, dialogue and expertise into action. My name is Tom Cooper and I am the Director of Strategic Planning and Economic Development at Salt River Project or SRP. SRP is a unique organization that has been vital to the development of the Phoenix metropolitan area since our founding in 1903. One of the nation's first federal reclamation projects and the largest raw water provider in the Phoenix metropolitan area, 
we deliver approximately 760,000 acre feet of water annually and manage a 13,000 square mile watershed. We are the third largest not-for-profit public power utility in the U.S. with more than one million customers and one of the first utilities to implement a comprehensive sustainability plan with a complete portfolio of goals. SRP has always been a community-based organization and the sustainability goals are a reflection of our role in the Phoenix metropolitan area. We understand that decisions made by SRP have real community impacts. As an essential business that provides critical and indispensable resources, decisions we make not only affect our organization, they also affect the customers and communities we serve in tangible ways, from environmental impacts to the Valley's economic vitality to how we are embedding sustainability deeper into SRP's culture. And given that sustainability is about all of us, SRP and the communities we serve, it is important that we openly and transparently communicate our vision for the future and what we are doing to shape it. It is also important that we partner with and support organizations who are driving sustainability forward through actions that make a difference. And the Arizona Sustainability Alliance is such an organization and why SRP is pleased to help sponsor this year's sustainability celebration. We believe that the Arizona Sustainability Alliance fills an important need at driving change at the community level through tangible projects and meaningful advocacy. And we share the organization's concerns about the long-term health and well-being of our planet and generations to come. And on behalf of SRP, I would like to thank the Arizona Sustainability Alliance for their great work and I'm very excited to participate in this year's sustainability celebration. We're here at Antelope Park in beautiful Prescott Valley, and we're here with the new Desert Financial Credit Union in town and Arizona Sustainability, and we're planting over 34 trees. There's so many important things about trees. They provide a canopy and they beckon kids to come and create a sense of adventure at a young age. My name is Kayla Kaloran. I'm with the Arizona Sustainability Alliance. I am the tree planting coordinator. We had Desert Financial Credit Union come out. They provided all of the volunteers. The two parks that we've worked at today, the first one we were at was Antelope Park, and we planted 14 trees there at Mountain Valley Park. We have 20 trees here for a grand total of 34 trees all day. Uh, we had about 35 people here total today between all the volunteers. So it was a great group of people and we're really excited to be out here. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is obviously dig a hole um, and you always want to make sure that your hole is wider than the size of the plant that you're putting in, um, but you don't ever really want to go too deep. So an easy way to measure if you're deep enough is to take your shovel and turn it upside down, stick it in the hole and estimate about where you're at and then check that against the size of the plant you're doing. So you don't ever want to be too deep and it's better to be a little bit higher than it is to be too deep. So this is my assistant Josh and he's going to show you here how to how to loosen the tree to get it out of the bucket. So if you lay it on its side and put some weight on it, it loosens it up and it makes it easier for you to pull it out of that bucket when you're ready to plant it. Once you've got it loose, if you get two people, one to hold the bucket and one to pull it out. And you want to grab low on the trunk. You might need to shape and try to pull it out in one piece and then set it in your hole. Now again, you want to try to have two people to do this part. You want to try to get it as straight as you can and then have the other person fill the hole in while you hold the tree straight.
and at this point you kind of want to let it go stand back take a look at it make sure it looks straight looks like looks like a tree should look and then go ahead and kind of pack that down a little bit pack the soil around to make sure that it holds in place the easiest way to do that is to stand up and then just sort of walk around put some pressure on it and pack that soil in Okay, so at this point you can see we're done, the tree's in, we've filled the hole back in, everything looks good. In the event that you're planting somewhere that you don't have irrigation, it's always a good idea to take the excess dirt that you have and kind of build this well and this ring around the tree. That way when it does get some supplemental water or you get rain, it's going to hold that water in on the tree. Um, if you have an irrigation system, you don't need to build this ring, only if you don't. Everybody. My name is Tirsa and I'm the Food Systems Priority Lead for the Arizona Sustainability Alliance. So I've been with AZSA for almost three years now and over that time I've had the chance to start some pretty cool projects with the Food Systems Priority, um, including Food Tech for the Future Growing Digital Farmers, which is Arizona's very first K-12 food computer program. So if you don't already know, a food computer is a digital greenhouse connected to a Raspberry Pi or a computer system um, where you can monitor and manipulate plant growth vari variables by programming the computer. So for instance, um, if you have two computers, you can set them at different lighting or, um, or temperature settings and then compare how the same plants grow in each one. Um, so this is really cool because we can learn how food grows best, right, which can help us create more sustainable systems around um, um, our food production and agriculture. Uh, and so we found this project, or we found uh, food computer technology in 2018 and thought it would be such a cool project to get high school students involved in um, both STEM and agriculture. Um, so in 2018, we entered a Microsoft pitch off at ASU and won, um, which helped us start the pro, uh, which helped us pilot the program at Glendale High School uh, in the spring of 2019. So um, during that time, we worked with the Glendale High School Science Club to build two computers. And we also um, worked outside of that with AZSA volunteers to build a pilot computer for our own use to better understand the technology. Um, so during the pilot project, uh, 
we really learned a lot about how students relate to food computer technology. And um, we thought it, they were all going to be just so excited about the coding and um, programming aspect of it. But in fact, they really liked learning how to grow food and learning how plants grow and um, researching, measuring the plants and taste testing, of course. We talk about an urban forest, it's a bit of a misnomer because we don't have an ecological forest in the ur urban environment. We have assemblages of plants. We have trees that are installed and usually in very hard soil that's not um, ecologically supporting for that tree. So the key, the key here for sustainability is always humans. It's always humans. Humans have to provide the resources. Humans have to decide what to do. Humans have to be willing to pay for it. And humans have to know what is needed and when. So when you talk about the urban forest, always remember, that you're not talking about an ecologically sustainable forest. Hi everybody, my name is Mike Kurtz. My wife, Michelle Bevins, is the Systems Director for the AZSA. This is Octavia. She's been volunteering and working for the AZSA in various capacities for the last three years. Not only am I an advocate for the AZSA, I'm also a volunteer. So, we have reached the $500 milestone in the Giving Tuesday campaign. So thank you everyone that has donated so far. Uh, AZSA is growing quickly and we need every little bit of help and support to maintain our innovative projects and programs. Uh, at this milestone, for your viewing pleasure, I will be taking an earth pie in the face. The nutrient-rich soil was gathered from our own beloved backyard garden right here. Uh, strategically placed in the pie, there are three sunflower seeds that once the soil is scraped out of the beard, we will be planting uh, in our yard. Uh, did you know, fun fact, that uh, sunflower seeds grow year-round in Arizona. So, uh, please donate and share our Giving Tuesday campaign link and help us exceed our goal of $7,500. With each milestone, more people will be taking one of these uh, wonderful earth, soil, mud pies in the face.
delicious. Hi everyone, my name is Michael. I'm with the advisory board with the AZSA. Thank you all for your donations. We recently achieved our milestone of $4,250 and our goal of $7,500 for Giving Tuesday. I wanna thank everyone for their donations. Um, with that milestone, you know what that means. You get to see a mud pie in my face. So I'm sure a lot of my coworkers and my friends will be very happy to see this. <laughs> feels like we're a big community and feeling as if we're united and coming together to create something. So this is Global Youth Services Day. Uh, we are joining millions of teens around the globe in an effort to give back to the local community. Um, so we have about 60 Avondale youth that are signed up to, to help with this event today. Um, we're going to plant 40 trees um, around their field, I think to provide some great shade for students. We're in Arizona, it's very hot. Shade's very important, so this is, this is a very important project because it is hot out here and you want to get a little bit of cooler uh, area, you sit under a nice shaded tree. We are planting 40 total trees, two different species, uh, 20 of which are going to be ficus and then the other 20 are Chinese elm. And they're uh, really well adapted to this environment, they're not deciduous, uh, so they're not going to shed their leaves, but they're going to provide a really great shade canopy all year round. It honestly makes me feel pretty good. Like, in general, I always liked hands-on work and like also like planting in general. I've always kind of done that with my mom and stuff. So I feel like doing it in like a community setting where it's going to be like impactful for like generations to come and like provide shade and like better like the ecosystem in general. I feel like it's really impactful and I'm really happy to be doing it. I think right now um, this like small little part that we're doing is going to have a long-term impact on our school and honestly the whole community with um, the carbon dioxide intake that the trees are going to take for us. So to the city of Avondale, it's really important to make sure we're engaging youth, we're getting them involved in the community that they live in, they play in, um, that they go to school in. So Global Youth Service Day is really important to us um, since it is a nationally recognized day of service for youth. Um, we want to make sure that they're involved, they understand uh, the needs in their community, and they know about days like this that take place in order to serve their community and get their friends involved. The youth are our future and we're seeing a lot of uh, change and action coming from the younger generation and invest in our future both uh, as a community by planting trees that will provide shade and cooling and habitat for, for wildlife uh, as well as investing in, in themselves. I would say it's very important considering that it really builds your like social skills and even experience. I know that volunteering for me has made me feel like I'm being a part of something and progressing in myself and also in my community. Um, well, we're both in environmental science class and so we also just wanted to like, as our last year as being seniors, like to give back to the school and like kind of leave a lasting mark. Yeah, um, I'm also part of like volunteer clubs here. So we encourage people at our school to sign up 
and decided to do it as well. We definitely see a huge impact uh, when it comes to the families. The youth are, are telling their parents that these events um, take place, that they are in the community, and we see the parents actually come to our uh, resource center. So we're really excited to work with Arizona Sustainability Alliance on a, on a few different projects. Um, this is uh, one example of that here today where we're planting trees. We've been working with Arizona Sustainability Alliance for the past few months as well as uh, Arizona Public Service. They're our power provider. APS has a commitment to reliable energy for our customers and uh, we're also always looking to do that in the most sustainable and clean way. We have a clean energy commitment where we're uh, moving towards 100% renewable energy in 2050. I would say it's really important considering that we don't have much time left. We are the now of like um, our future, so what we do right now is going to help um, ourselves later on. I decided to be a part of the workforce program because there's not a lot of programs out there that focus on specifically clean energy, and there's not a lot of like even schools that teach programs about how to conserve energy or how to clean up certain areas like the environment and so that really interested me. Uh, I wanted to join because when I heard about it from my chemistry teacher it seemed like a unique opportunity. I never heard about it before and I just thought oh, it was a good, good opportunity to take on. I got interested because you could learn more about the energy and clean energy. We take classes, we take communication classes, we took I think another clean energy class and then we just do weekly calls emphasizing and talking more about clean energy and like different aspects of it. I'm just interested in everything that goes into it, like behind the scenes, like all the math, the statistics and just measuring everything so that you can come up with a solution. I think it's important because it's a great future like investment for the future and I think it can make like a great impact on like the greener, greener world. How to communicate, how to um, analyze stuff, we look at like charts and stuff. Sometimes we're in meetings and we get told about like analytics, stats, about like usage, clean, you know, power usage and like scores and basically how like we could cut down the, the prices of it. I thought that was interesting to learn like also how much energy consumption goes into school which is more than I would think. Clean energy is important because it, it'll conserve our world for more years to come versus just keep running down our world, filling it with pollutants, and making the quality of life for like people in general and animals like very difficult. Uh, interesting fact I learned was that solar panels actually weigh very little. I would advise like to put solar panels, solar panels for sure on the rooftop because it could save power and their bill, energy bill. When I grow up, I'm most interested in like the tech aspect, like computer science and that. But I would love to like implement that into sustainability future I want to get into either like the clean energy field or the medical field because those are two like aspects that I'm really interested in and like really know about. school has been slowly but surely being uh, upgraded around here but when that happens a lot of things change change so last year they put in a fire lane which cost 13 trees to be pulled out so with that being said my our PTO wants to make sure we're replacing those trees we are planting trees we lost several last summer and some upgrades 
and so we're here planting 22 of these beautiful trees. So my community, our PTO, um, everyone around is a part of making sure that happens, which is special. I think that's a, a big piece because if the, the funding isn't necessarily being used in the schools, the community can be a part of giving back uh, to their schools. One, they're just amazing for our environment and we need more here just because it's the desert. We still need trees. Um, and to me, shade is important. These kiddos are out here and it's hot in the sun. There's really nowhere because they're limited to where they get to play. Um, there's nowhere for them to like just hang out and like get out of the sun. Makes me think, oh yes, finally, shade. Shade, my goodness, it's so hot out here. We have some parent volunteers here. We have our staff volunteering. Um, and we actually have some outreach from our faith-based partnerships too. Um, as a neighborhood group with our church, we want to volunteer um, and help the communities around us. So we decided as a group to volunteer. One of the members of our group is a teacher at this school. It was great. It's awesome to, for all of us to get together on a Saturday and be here knowing that we're making things better for these kids who are going to be going to the school here. So. I've learned a lot even before we even started. <laughs> Kayla taught us all about it, how to prep the roots, how to get the hole perfect in the dirt so that the roots can flourish. Uh, well, we dig a hole deep enough. We take the tree out of the pot. We put the tree in the hole. Then we cover it, put the stakes in and tie it. So I've been here for 13 years. My oldest is a senior this year and she's been here since kinder on up. My youngest is in second grade so I would love to see that by the time she leaves the school and then beyond that we get to have, we see these flourish, we see them grow, we pass by even when she doesn't go here and we get to know that we helped make that difference. I think it grows along with our kids so it's kind of a, a symbol of, of our, our kids growing here too. Um, and them being able to sit under them, play under them, you know, I think that's really what it does for us here. We were approached, you know, knock on our door and they said they're putting in free trees and wanted to know if we were interested. And Typically the Arizona Sustainability Alliance, we normally plant at schools in parks and we really want to expand that. We used to have a tree in our front yard providing shade. Uh, it died, you know, we, we chopped it down and uh, you could definitely feel the difference in temperature, so it, it, uh, it, it does make a difference having a tree here. Uh, a lot of where there is not high tree equity are within residences and in, in private homes. So we are trying to expand to that, and so today we are planting at nine different locations uh, throughout Mesa. We had already landscaped our backyard about a year ago at that point, and we were trying to figure out what to do with our front yard, so. It was, it was definitely an opportune time. and So we worked with an outreach organization called Unlimited Potential. They've been really phenomenal in working with the homeowners, identifying which homeowners want which tree, and then uh, coordinating with them so we can come out here today and plant. No one hates free stuff. <laughs> and so the, the fact that it's, it's a project already in the works um, it, it definitely helps me out as the, as the homeowner. I ended a couple of different species, uh, the majority of which are from the request of the homeowners. If they didn't have one that they specifically wanted, we worked with them to see what their needs were and match that with a similar tree. The desert willow, well, the look, it, I, I love the flowers. We, we, we love the, uh, the, the kind of pop of purple color that it gives there. So we planted um, a lot of red push pistache, which are desert adapted, desert willows, which are native and have really beautiful flowers, uh, lace bark elms, those are non-deciduous, so they're really great for, you know, not having a messy yard. Um, and then we planted some Arizona ash. Uh, it, it means we have a focal point in which we can now landscape our front yard, uh, uh, start attacking that project. We want to make sure that we are providing education. So we created some tree maintenance guides that were translated in Spanish and in English. And then we have some guides that are specific to each specific tree. And that will tell you how to take care of it, um, what kind of sun and soil. Oh, I love it. I can't wait until it grows bigger and, you know, provides shade, get that good smelling from the flowers in, in the front yard. So I'm excited.